Okay, welcome to Kojo's Math, solving one-step equations that are multiplication and division. You should be feeling pretty good now about solving addition and subtraction one-step equations. Let's do a quick review. When you're solving any equation, you want to isolate the variable. And you do this by manipulating the equation and doing the inverse operation to both sides. How do we isolate the variable and how do we manipulate the equation and use the inverse? By looking to see what is actually being done to the variable. So how do you undo multiplication? What is the inverse of multiplication? Division. And how do you undo division? What's the inverse of division? That's correct. You multiply. All right. So here we have these equations that are one step. Now these are all multiplication equations. How do I know that? Because how do you say this? Well we say 3x equals 21, but how do we really say it? What do we, what's really happening to the variable? 3 times x equals 21. Well how do you undo multiplication? You divide. That's the inverse. So here's how you show your work. What numbers, what kinds of numbers mean division? Fractions. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. And yes, you must show your work in this, in this manner. You're going to show division, a fraction, and a fraction. Because 3 divided by 3 is 1. It's not 0. X. And then 21 divided by 3 is 3. I mean, excuse me, 21 divided by 3 is 7. How do we check it? We check, we'll go back in here and we say 3 times 7 is 21, 21 equals 21. Remember, you should pretty much be able to find out, be able to see the answer to all these variables because they're one-step equations. We're practicing for multi-step equations, which are more difficult, which you will not be able to figure out in your head all the time. So you have to do the, this work. You have to do it. You can't just write the answer. You're going to lose multiple points on this, on a test. So here we go to this one. This one's a little bit different. What is being done to the y? We're multiplying by a negative 4. It's multiplication. This is not subtraction. We don't add 4 to both sides here because we're multiplying. You can't, the inverse of multiplication is not addition. If we're multiplying by a negative 4, we must then, there, there, then therefore divide both sides by a negative 4, and that is the inverse of multiplying. So we're going to draw our fraction lines, and we're going to show division of negative 4 on both sides. These will always cancel, and you'll be left with 1, because any number divided by itself is 1. You're going to bring down the y and the equals. And again, be careful with the signs. Positive 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. I'm going to circle those because on the test you should do that as well. We get down here. What's being done to the x? We're multiplying by a negative 5. What's the inverse of multiplying by a negative 5? Dividing by a negative 5. We're going to show that by doing fractions and we do both sides. The negative 5's cancels and cancel, and yes, you must show that. It'll be less confusing for you. X equals, we bring that down, and we read this. And we remember our rules for division of positive and negative numbers. Negative 25 divided by negative 5 is a positive 5. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. Now we go over here. What's being done to the variable? We're multiplying by 14. How do we do, undo that? What's the inverse of multiplying by 14? Divide by 14. You mark both sides, divide by 14. The 14's cancel to 1y. We bring down the y. Negative 28 divided by 14 is negative 2. And we go back. 14 times negative 2 is negative 28. Okay. You know what? When you have equations that are multiplication, where you're multiplying the variable and you have to undo by division, that one's a pretty easy step. You should be getting that one pretty quickly. 
It's the ones that represent division, division equations, that give students the most difficulty, which we're going to. So before we get there, I want you to think about this. What kinds of numbers represent division? Fractions. So yeah, that's what we're going to be working with. So the one thing I want you to keep in mind is how do you undo division? You multiply. What's the inverse operation of division? multiplication. If you're dividing and you have a fraction, what do you do? Well, watch. You've all done it before. Okay. 1 half x equals 10. We're taking half of x. That's division. We want half of x. Well, how do you undo that? Well, you got to go back to reciprocals with fractions. When we're dividing with fractions, what do we really do? We multiply by the reciprocal. You multiply by the reciprocal. Whenever you're dividing fractions, you end up multiplying by the reciprocal. We're going to do the same thing. To do that, we're going to show giant parentheses. And remember, parentheses show multiplication. That's what we've been building up to. What's the reciprocal of one half? Two over one. So you need to memorize this until you completely grasp the understanding. If whatever the fraction is, we take the reciprocal and we multiply both sides. Yes, this is how you have to show your work. You must show giant parentheses around the whole equation and then this should always give you 1 because any fraction times its reciprocal will give you 1. So the x comes down and then we say 10 over, what is this? What Mr. L? Oh yes, this is what? This is 10 over 1. He's right. It'll show this but you have to remember it's 10 over 1. Very good call. So we get 10, we multiply numerators. 10 times 2 is 20 and that becomes 20 over 1, which equals 20. All right, here we go. Look at this one. Giant parentheses, we should automatically know, just like when we're graphing absolute value, we know that it's going to be a V. If the, if the X is being multiplied by 2 thirds, we know it's a fraction. We know we have to multiply by the reciprocal. We know we have to put giant parentheses. So what is the reciprocal of two-thirds? Three halves. We just flip it upside down. These will always cancel because any number times its reciprocal is one. Bring down the x. Hmm, what? That's right. Remember what Mr. Al said? It's 10 over 1. So 10 times 3 is 30 over 2. Well, you know what 30 over 2 is. 15. So x is equal to 15. Now we come over here. It's a fraction. It's division equation. The inverse operation is to multiply by the reciprocal. Oh, Mr. Al has a very good point. He wants to remind you. It's a negative one-fourth. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of negative one-fourth, which is negative four over one. Don't forget that, because we're going to cancel these. We have to get rid of that. It's a negative number, so we take the reciprocal of the negative number. So we bring down y, and then again, this is 12 over one. So 12 times negative four is negative 48. I don't have to show over one if I recognize this. Here we go. Now we have negative 2 sevenths x equals negative 4. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Negative 7 halves, because it's negative 2 sevenths. The reciprocal is negative 7 halves. Ooh. These cancel to 1. And then remember, this is over 1. So negative 4 times negative 7. A negative times a negative is a positive. So we get 28 over 2. What is 28 over 2? X equals 14. All right. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these and show your work. Show your work. Pause the video, write these down, show all your steps. And then when you're done, come back and I'll give you the solutions. 
Alright, welcome back. Here are the solutions. See all my work? You should have gotten y equals 4 because you're dividing both sides by 8. Here you should get k equals 0 because 0 divided by 5 is 0. Here, the m is on the other side. You still treat it the same way, except it's on this side. You still divide both sides by 6, m equals negative 12. You could write it as m equals negative 12. These are the same. We're going to come down here. Now this one, I, some of you probably might have divided both sides by 9. Remember, whatever the number is with the variable is the number that you divide both sides by. It, you're going to get fractions on some of these answers. So when you get 9 twelfths, you simplify it to 3 fourths. I don't want decimals. I do not want decimals. They're not incorrect, but they take more time. I want fractions. This one, you're going to divide both sides by negative 15. Again, I have negative 3 divided by negative 15, which is positive 1 fifth. We come down here, we're multiplying both sides by 7 over 1. See the giant parentheses? You should have x equals 42. Ah, here you're going to have the, the number that you're multiplying by y is negative 1 half. The reciprocal is negative 2 over 1. If I multiply both sides by negative 2 over 1, giant parentheses, you get y equals negative 20. Here, we multiply by the reciprocal negative 3 halves. You don't multiply by only part of it, you multiply by the whole thing because you want to get rid of it. So it becomes 1. Negative 12 times negative 3 over 2. Remember what Mr. Al said? This is negative 12 over 1. So numerator times numerator is negative 36. And 1 times 2, there's no negative with this 2. The negative is only with the 3. Is negative 2. And we get x equals 18 because it's negative and then we have that. Okay, so a negative 36 divided by negative 2 is positive 18. Because this is actually a negative 12 times a negative number, which becomes positive. All right, I want you to write down two things you learned about solving multiplication and division equations and bring one question that you still have for those. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.